hello friends. Today is our last bad girl of the Bible. Today we're going to talk about the sinful woman. We don't know her name, her age, or her history. We only know that she was bad for a season. To be specific, she sold her body for money. Because her sinful lifestyle was common knowledge, people whispered about her, eyed her with disdain, avoided her company. Except Jesus. He welcomed her touch. He met her gaze. He called her forgiven. We want to turn to Luke chapter 7, verses 36 through 50. Here's the story. Simon, a Pharisee, invited Jesus to a large public dinner. In the style of the day, the Lord reclined at a low table, propping himself up on his left elbow, eating with his right hand. His body was stretched out, his feet exposed. Aha! Then a woman who had lived a sinful life in that town showed up at Simon's house. Make no mistake, she was an especially wicked sinner, an immoral woman. Her sins weren't listed in detail because they didn't need to be. The world's oldest profession hardly requires a job description. She came along bearing a small alabaster vial of perfume. Did she intend to give the Lord this flask of ointment, this jar of fragment oil? Or did she mean simply to anoint his head, a common gesture of respect? Whatever her plans, they flew out the window the moment she saw him. Jesus. Speechless, she drew closer, then stood behind him at his feet, weeping. Little wonder. Tears often spring to my eyes, too, when I sense the Lord's presence. Tears of sorrow for my sins, tears of gratitude for his goodness. Perhaps she felt the same way. Perhaps you've been there as well. She cried so hard that her tears began to wet his feet. You know she must have been mortified, but she couldn't stop her tears, not when her heart was filled to overflowing. She sank to her knees, then bowed her head so low it touched the ground. Jesus didn't pull away. He didn't scold her. He didn't make her feel foolish. No, he gladly received the baptism of her tears, recognizing this heartfelt expression for what it was, worship, pure and holy. She could have used her sleeves to dry his tear-drenched feet, but instead she wiped them with the hair of her head. Far more personal, more humble, more sacrificial. Our bad girl held nothing back now. She pressed her lips to his feet, kissing them many times, not just once in shy affection, but over and over again with an abundance born of passion. It was customary to kiss a man's hand or cheek or the hem of his garment, but this woman kissed his dirt-covered, stone-bruised feet. And she wasn't finished yet. Then she reached for her alabaster box and poured perfume on his feet, the same perfume she wore to advertise her services. So much for slipping under the radar at Simon's gathering. When Mary of Bethany anointed Jesus on a later occasion, the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. This anointing, though, was done in a different time and place and performed by a very different woman. Not Mary of Bethany and certainly not Mary Magdalene, who has yet to be introduced in Luke's Gospel and who was never called a prostitute anywhere in Scripture. But this woman? Undeniably bad. Simon the Pharisee had seen enough. He said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know who was touching him, what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. He was not only disgusted with the social outcast devoted to sin, he was also unimpressed with Jesus. If he were a prophet, clearly Simon was not convinced. Jesus knew the man's thoughts and so responded with a story about two men in debt to a moneylender. One owed a lot, one owed a little. Neither man could afford to pay back his loan, so the moneylender canceled their debts and freely forgave them both. Don't you love the Lord's teaching style? Enter into their story, he beckons. Learn from their example. When Jesus asked Simon, which of them will love him more, the Pharisee had no choice but to confess, I suppose the one he forgave more. Right, Simon. The Lord affirmed the man's answer, then turned toward our repentant bad girl, even as he continued speaking to Simon. This is my favorite part. Do you see this woman? Simon saw a prostitute, period. He didn't see her as a person, nor had he noticed her acts of worship for what they were. But Jesus missed nothing. He saw her. He saw her sordid past, her humble present, and her glorious future. He quickly described all the ways she'd honored him. Unlike Simon, then finished with his startling announcement. 
Her sins, which are many, are forgiven. All her sins, all are forgiven? Yes. But why? Because she loves much. We've called her silent adulation worship. What she really poured all over his feet was love. Her tears, her hair, her kisses, her perfume. Love, love, love. In comparison, Jesus told Simon, He who is forgiven little, loves little. In truth, no one should fall into that category because we've all been forgiven of a great many sins. All of us should be reduced to tears of gratitude. All of us should be on our faces before him. Our former bad girl understood that, which is why Jesus told her straight out, Your sins are forgiven. Not will be or might be, they are forgiven. The other guests began murmuring among themselves as Jesus offered the woman a final word of assurance. Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Peace? Yes, please. What woman doesn't need more of that in her life? She did not speak her faith. No verbal confession, no sinner's prayer was recorded here. But she certainly demonstrated her love for a God who forgives completely. May we go and do the same this week, this day, this hour. Now here's the question for this week. How can we know, as surely as this woman did, that our sins are forgiven? Well, God's word declares that truth over and over again, like a shower of kisses. Romans 4, 7 says, Blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Then in the next chapter, in, in uh, Romans 5, 8, God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Need more? Ephesians 1, 7 and 8 says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. Forgiven. The word is written on our foreheads and etched across our hearts. It's genuine, true, a finished work. I may not always feel worthy of his forgiveness, but that doesn't change the fact of it. Your sins have been forgiven on account of his name. It's done. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, that wraps up our Bad Girls of the Bible study. Um, next week, uh, we'll have a study on um, Holy Week, on Lent. And then we have April 6th off for spring break. And then the following week, uh, what is that, April 13th, uh, we'll start our last study of the year, if you can believe it, and that will be on prayer. And hopefully I can do little recaps of that after, uh, after each week's lesson, too. So be watching for that. And for today, let's close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, ladies, have a blessed Easter, and um, we'll see uh, see you coming up with uh, our next study on prayer. Amen.